Welcome to uh, History 210, the Early Middle Ages. Uh, I'm Paul Friedman. And behind this innocuous title, the Early Middle Ages, I think we're going to have to jazz it up a little. I think we're going to put an exclamation mark on it, <laughs> at least. But behind this innocuous title, you will see, I hope, uh, uh, if you stay for this course, a strange course. Strange, uh, not because it covers the particular period 250 to 1000, uh, but because it starts out very recognizable and gets stranger and stranger and seems to dissolve into a kind of a hard to grasp world. Um, hard to grasp but fun. I will talk about both the strangeness and the fun aspects uh, in more detail. There are several great themes in this span of centuries. The fall of the Roman Empire, its survival in the East as the Byzantine Empire, the so-called barbarian invasions and kingdoms set up on the ruins of the Roman Empire, the triumph of Christianity, which went from being an outlawed minority religion to the established faith of the Roman Empire, and then survived the extinction of the Roman Empire. Uh, we have uh, <coughs> two teaching fellows, uh, Lauren Mancia, sitting at this end, and Agnieszka Reitz, standing in that corner. Uh, so far, there are sections scheduled for Wednesday at 4 o'clock and Friday at 10.30. Uh, we'll probably have two other sections. Uh, we'll see how large the class uh, is next week. Uh, let me know if those two section times uh, well, probably the classes, the sections to be added would be on Thursday, <coughs> Thursday afternoon and Thursday evening. But let me know if you have some special problem in terms of the scheduling of, your, uh, of the sections. Uh, as I said um, when some of you were already here, I'll have some pauses uh, so that if you are shopping and want to look at another course, uh, uh, it'll be... Um, if not easy, at least possible for you to get up and uh, uh, leave. Um, so I'll have several pauses during the, uh, during the uh, presentation. But I should say I do want to give a full class um, uh, discussion today or presentation today. We only have so many opportunities to discuss things, and I'd like to set the scene for you, uh, and I think that will also help you decide uh, um, uh, about taking this course. Now, uh, this course is part of the uh, Yale Open Courses uh, program. Uh, and as you probably know, there are lots of, uh, well, a select number, but a substantial number of courses that are um, uh, offered free to the public via the internet. And this is one of them for the fall. And I take this opportunity uh, to greet our uh, internet students and internet um, uh, friends. So since it's part of this project, uh, a Yale University broadcast team uh, will be uh, recording all the classes. And um, they'll be as unobtrusive as possible. Uh, the classroom experience will be essentially as it would be if they're not there. And it's their intention to videotape me and not you. Uh, uh, so neither your faces nor voice, uh, our voices are supposed to uh, appear. Your questions are unlikely to be uh, heard. I will repeat the questions so that uh, people watching this uh, on the internet will uh, have an idea. And I do encourage questions, both things that you haven't understood or things for elucidation. I have a slightly more formal lecture style than some people, perhaps. Um, uh, I have a, a try to have a reasonably structured uh, uh, lecture that doesn't wander off too much. Some of you have taken courses from me and know that uh, uh, I have certain uh, themes or preoccupations or uh, diversions, but I'm going to try to uh, uh, be as coherent as possible, uh, partly because we are um, uh, filming this. Um, so I, I hope that you're enthusiastic about the fact that uh, we're participating in this uh, Yale Open Courses initiative. And having said that, now you should just think it away. 
um, uh, the uh, uh, the team, uh, broadcast team, is not very conspicuous, and the objective is for us to interact in the classroom as we normally would, and. Um, uh, <laughs> this is part of the unique experience of teaching and learning at Yale, so don't hesitate to ask me if you have any questions or uh, concerns. Uh, the syllabus. You all have copies uh, of the syllabus, I believe, and of course you'll have seen it on the server. Uh, the books are at Yale Bookstore, and they are all there. I'm I hope there will be enough copies. If not, we will, we will get more. The first assignment is uh, um, conveniently, in this sense, from the course pack. The course pack is at Tyco, the uh, photocopy place on uh, Elm Street. Uh, if you don't know where that is, uh, um, let us know. Um, and the assignments for Monday and Wednesday uh, from the, um, uh, the, the f those first two assignments are from that book, from Peter Brown's World of Late Antiquity and A. H. M. Jones. Constantine and the uh, conversion of uh, Western Europe. Questions so far? Right, okay. So uh, the requirements that you see on the syllabus are a short paper that's due October the 10th, a midterm that will be held in class October 17th, and a long paper which is due December 5th. That long paper is a research paper, and we'll be glad to help you choose a topic, offer you suggestions, help you get started on that. <coughs> it's 15 to 20 pages, and it counts for 40% of your grade. There's a, the midterm counts 30% of the grade, the short paper 20%, and your section grade is 10%. Now, this course does not have onerous requirements, but I expect you to do the requirements that we have. There's no final exam. I urge you to blot out of your mind the temptation not to do the reading because there's no final exam or the reading of the second part of the course. And if we think that this is a problem, <coughs> judging on the basis of how the sections go, we reserve the possibility of giving you quizzes in the section, in the section half of the um, course. Uh, paper times, uh, I'm going to be firm on this. I can't say absolutely no extensions on the paper because I acknowledge the existence of overwhelming emergencies. But let me give you an example of an excuse that's not going to be accepted. I have three other papers due that week. Okay, plan in advance. We are at your disposal. If you want to plan your final paper tomorrow, hey, this afternoon, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, talk to me. Uh, I'm eager to, uh, to hear from you about that. Uh, in the sections, uh, we don't want you to bring laptops. And the reason for that is not that we think you're going to be um, Facebooking or answering your email, because we know that you never do that. <laughs> um, uh, the laptops, in our experience, interfere with the purpose of the section, which is partly to talk to each other. And r rather than focusing on the screen and then, in a sense, being a series, an archipelago of little islands, rather than a section in the sense of give and take and uh, interchange. If you think that that imposes some kind of hardship on you, I, I think you'll find uh, that uh, 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 it is pleasant. And if there's some technical hardship, let me know. So, logistical questions? Questions about the organization of the course or uh, any other aspect of this? Good, that means that I'm uh, clearer than uh, on some occasions. <laughs> so, uh, uh, if anybody is... Uh, uh, wants to leave now, this is one opportunity. But since it looks like I have your attention riveted, uh, <laughs> let me introduce the course in terms of its actual content. We are <coughs> beginning by looking at the crisis of the Roman Empire, and then we will be looking at its peculiar legacy. 
in the year 1000, where we stop, we will still be dealing with the inheritance of the Roman Empire, the title of Chris Wickham's book, one of the books that we're going to be using a lot. The legacy is peculiar because while the memory of the Roman Empire remains intact throughout the period and beyond, I mean, to this day, the head of the Catholic Church is in Rome. Uh, until 1960, the uh, uh, transactions of the papacy were in Latin. The services of the church were in Latin. The Catholic Church were in Latin, and Latin remains the official language of, uh, of the Catholic Church in its administrative head. So um, the most faithful preserver of Rome and its legacy, historically, is the Catholic Church. And this is a paradox because the church begins its career, indeed its first 250 years, as illegal in the Roman Empire. And indeed, there are periodic persecutions where people were uh, punished, including uh, killed, because they were Christians. The most faithful preserver of Rome, however, after the fifth century collapse of the empire in the West is the so-called Byzantine Empire. The Byzantine Empire with its headquarters in Constantinople. Despite the fact that it would abandon Latin for Greek in the 6th century and turn into a very different kind of political and cultural entity, the Byzantine Empire went down in flames to the Turks in 15, uh, 1453, uh, still as the Roman Empire. That was its official name to the end. Another heir to the Roman Empire, in a sense, is Islam, which begins in the seventh century, in the middle of our period. I don't have to emphasize to you the historical importance of Islam, but our task is to understand its origin and its astonishing expansion in terms of this era. 252, 1000, to understand it in terms of its times and thus how it arises and interacts with uh, the Roman and uh, Byzantine as well as offstage the Persian empires that it either destroys or weakens in the 7th and 8th centuries. Muhammad was from outside the former empire, from Arabia, and may be said to represent a very different kind of set of ideas. But the power of Islam would, for centuries, be concentrated in areas of the former Roman Empire, the Mediterranean, the Balkans, Egypt, Syria, North Africa, of course, in the, the latter, it uh, still is, uh, the uh, overwhelming majority religion. And Islam then brings up a, a, a sort of um, question that I'm not going to deal with directly very much but that will be at the back of our minds, and 